Hey guys, this is Ernesto. Welcome back to yet another video. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I'm having a wonderful day. So today I'm going to walk you guys through how I went from this image to this image. And yes, I did do a live broadcast of this photo shoot and you guys saw how I actually executed this photo shoot. However, if you want to hear my thoughts on what went into creating these images, stay tuned and we're going to get straight into it. Planning. So I find the process quite interesting. So here are some of the things I thought about for this particular image before I went to execute it. So the first thing I thought about was light and darkness. The next thing I thought about was color. What type of color was I trying to portray in this image? The other thing I thought about was composition. What composition do I want to have in this image when I'm trying to tell this story? and the mood, what I'm trying to you know, get out of this image, what I'm trying to tell as far as a story to the viewer that's watching these images. And the final thing is pose. Pose is always in critical to one of my components of creating an image. So yes, pose is always part of my planning process. So those are the kind of things I think about before going into a photo shoot. And that's what I thought about when I was thinking about this particular photo shoot. So having a general idea of what I would like to do is very, very important for me, at least in my head when I show up for a photo shoot, because when I show up for a photo shoot, I want to have an idea of what I'm doing from, you know, from A to Z. Now, not everything would execute as I have outlined in my head because things change as you show up for a particular photo shoot, you know, the lighting conditions might change, the, the environment might change, um, you know, any number of things could change and you have to be flexible enough to change your plan. But having a general outline of what you would like to do help to not only one, save me time, but it also saves the talents time because we have a general goal of what we want to work towards. So that means for me, I don't have to be, you know, taking shots after shots, just aimlessly firing and hoping to create something, you know, wonderful. So let's talk about the goal of this image. The goal of this image was to create harmonious chaos by adding drama between lights and darks with a strong punch of color. Inspirationally, I was inspired by two images from a show called Into the Badlands. The cinematography on this show is absolutely amazing. Now, the show itself is also great as well. So if you want to go check it out, go ahead and check it out. Not sponsored, but that's the source of my inspiration. With these images, I was absolutely drawn to the rich, bold colors. More importantly, the beautiful light and the wonderful shadows, which created this amazing contrast that simply drew me in. So having this amazing template to build from allowed my imagination to go wild. However, I had to keep in mind that the location that I was going to be doing this shoot, which is this room, didn't have the same production value as the set design in these inspirational images that I was using for this particular photo shoot. So with this in mind, I understood that I had to have very specific light control, both on my talent and in this room because I wanted to make sure that light spill was very, very contained. From a lighting perspective, in the images that you will see, I used three specific light sources. My main light for this particular photo shoot was the AD600, which had a reflector and a grid on it. That grid and the reflector helped to narrow the beam of light specifically on my talent's face, helping to eliminate light spill. Also, the reflector helped to give me a nice specular light, which was great because I wasn't really looking for soft light in this particular image, not for this specific subject. In addition, I had two Godox 8200 lights in the background and both lights had gel. One had a CTO gel, the other had a blue gel, and both did not have any modifiers on it. It was just bare. The goal was to attempt to create an atmosphere that the talent would normally be in, which would be like a club or a concert because he's a DJ. Once the lighting was locked down, the next thing was to focus on getting the composition right. Now, I had two choices. 
I could have included the light sources, which would have been the two AD 200 lights in the background, or exclude the two light sources. I opted to include the light sources in this image because typically when you're looking at a concert photo, typically, at least for me, I usually notice that they have the light sources in the image. And with the light sources in the image, it really, really helped to tell the story. So the next thing was to focus on the pose. So from a posing perspective, I really, really didn't have to do much with respect to the pose for this particular portrait because what I was looking for was more of a casual vibe. I wasn't really looking for anything too intense. So bringing all those elements together from inspiration to execution really helped to bring this image together from where we started to where we ended up with this final image. All right, so before I go, I just wanted to let you guys know that one of the things that really, really drives my photography, um, I mentioned this in my bio, I mentioned this in previous videos, but what really, really inspires me is watching movies. And the thing that really drives movie production and really drive that visual element to a movie is the cinematography the cinematographers, or they sometimes refer to as the director of photography. Those are the types of people that really put together uh, the production. You know, they really work with the camera. They really work with, you know, putting together the light and the look and feel of, of the image. And, you know, the director is basically focused on trying to tell, you know, the story of, of the movie. So what I find myself doing, and I don't know if you guys do this, but what I find myself doing is really studying and following other cinematographers, uh, director of photography, you know, studying their work, watching what they do, because they put in a lot of years and they have a lot of experience and, and they have a lot of knowledge in, you know, lighting and production. For, so as a photographer, you know, that's basically where I'm, I'm striving to go. I'm trying to, you know, push my work to that next level. Um, you know, I don't have the years of experience that these guys do. And, and I don't have the level of, of experience that they do because they work on big projects and they put, you know, light, you know, these crazy sets. So when I go to movies, when I see their work, I get totally, totally inspired by it. Um, so what I would encourage you guys to do is if you don't know any cinematographers or, or um, you know, director of photography out there, you know, go and find the most, uh, the favorite, your favorite movie that really, really inspires you and then find out who's the director of photography, find out who's the cinema, cinematographer, and just go and you know study the other work that they have done and you will find that you are you know coming to understand you know some of the the light and productions that they put together so that is it i hope that was helpful guys if it was please go ahead and give me a big thumbs up on this video put some comments down below let me know what you think share this video with your friends and family and guys if you got this far in this video and you haven't subscribed yet to the channel what are you waiting for Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care.